LCBN Television broadcasts 24-7 on UK Freeview Channel 271, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, Google TV, See Love World, LCBNTV.com, LifeComTV.com. Good evening and welcome to another episode of Conversations with Lady. And I don't know if you've heard or seen the post. We have a podcast that goes with the program. So in case you've missed anything else or you're not at home and able to sit in front of your TV screen or your laptop or your iPad or your phone or you're driving. So we've got uh, the podcast available so you can download. And you can listen while you drive, while you work, um, even if you're doing, you know, household chores. So it's called Conversations with Lydia. It's on Spotify. It's on um, all the various sort of iPod, iPad, uh, podcast stations. But today, tonight, we've got a couple who are going to talk about their marriage. Um, it's something that's quite close to my heart um, or myself or my being. We're talking about when people marry um, somebody who's a different skin color, somebody who is culturally different from them. How do they merge uh, these cultures with their love, their marriage, their faith? Both of them are pastors. Did faith help them in making this decision or... Um, how does it all come together? So please welcome, me, help me welcome Pastor Zakako and Adrian Onokodo. Did I say the names right? Onduku. Onduku. And Andrea Onduku. Onduku. Good evening. Yes. Thank you again for agreeing to come on Conversations with Lydia. Good evening. It's so good to be with you. Thank you. And we had a, a bit of a conversation behind before we came on talking about my my history and uh, why the topic today. So who wants to go first? Who wants to talk a little bit about themselves before we, we start to talk about you as a couple? Okay. Um, my name is Akbo. Onduku, uh, Akbo means the world. Um, yeah, the, the, the full name is quite a, a job cracking. Uh, Akbo baby boy means the world matters or uh, global <laughs> issues, global affairs, international affairs. That's my full name. And uh, I happen to have a background in international relations and then peace studies and international law, you know. Uh, so I'm leaving up to my name. Mm. Yes. Um, yes. Originally from Nigeria, I came over to the UK 2001. So I've been here for almost 20 years. Uh, yeah, within the time, some few years after marriage, we both moved to the US. You know, when I was going over to law school in the US. Oh. And after that, worked for a while in the US, then we returned back to the UK. And we are pastors yeah, in Bradford, West Yorkshire, UK. Yes, and my name is Andrea Onduku, and I am originally from Northern Ireland. And I left Northern Ireland when I was about 20. And I've lived in Bradford for about 20, that should be 21 years now. And um, yeah, I, I don't speak as if I'm from Northern Ireland. We'll get into that. I'm sure later on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. I, I would not. I would. I. I. I didn't know where you're from, but I. I wouldn't have thought, thought Irish because your your accent seems to have uh, disappeared. Yeah. So, 
Pastor Akbar is doing his thing now. He's lived in the UK, gone to America. He's now preaching the gospel. So he's about the masters or the king's business, as, as we say. Um, so quite, quite a rich journey both of you have. Um, Ireland, Nigeria, the UK, America, and then back to the UK. So I will ask first, why Bradford? Why Bradford? Me, London at Bradford is like Bradford. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my journey to Bradford is an interesting one, but the short of it was that I, after my master's in international relations uh, back in Nigeria at the University of Benin, I wanted a place for a PhD. And uh, an uncle wanted to start the PhD with me in the same school. So we went around a couple of schools, you know, and finally it took me to the west of Nigeria, the University of Ife, uh, mm -hmm. where they call Obafe Mawolewo University now. You know, it took me because that was where he had his original undergraduate studies and he felt that he, I, I would love the school, you know, I would love Ife. So we both drove down from Delta State, that's the south, south of Nigeria to the southwest in Ife, and we went around the faculty of international studies or relations. Mm -hmm. And after going around, uh, we went there, I mean, just to pick up the PhD admission application form, you know, um, but after taking a tour, uh, we went to the library and uh, you know, we went to the bookshop of that university and we were buying some books and I picked a book international diplomacy, international environmental diplomacy. And that was my research area because I was researching on environmental politics. Um, so I bought the book and the author, at the back of the book, the author stated his qualifications. One is a Catholic Reverend Father that wrote the book mm -hmm. and he said, PhD, Peace Studies, Bradford, University of Bradford, England. And that was when I had you know, the knowledge of peace studies as an aspect of international and relations. So, and I, I mean, I got, you know, the book got my attention and I wrote you know, a letter to University of Bradford and you know, just a letter, then this email stuff was not all that in book then. And I just wrote that, please send me your prospectus. I wrote to the university and I stated that I'm, I'm interested in the peace studies program and they posted the processes to me and that was my journey from brad from the nigeria i first went to the european peace university in austria you know I studied there then from there i came over to bradford for the peace studies phd yeah for me i came to study as well i i wanted to study counseling and psychology um, and and um, I noticed that you also are a person-centered counselor, um, and that was, you know, similar um, what what we learned as well. And I wanted to do that and apply to different universities. And Bradford stood out. And you know, then then some people normally say to us, "Well, you went later went to America, and we were in Miami, Florida, the Sunshine State in America. Why back to Bradford? And that was that was that was God." Um, it, it wouldn't be a choice, would it? Yeah, <laughs> but when you come from the Sunshine State in America to Bradford with the beautiful weather we have here, but you know, <laughs> God knows all things. So somehow both of you journeyed and your journey sort of started in, in led you to Bradford. You yes. went away, but God still still brought you back uh, yes. to the place. So there's purpose in in a, in every i think all, all aspects of your journey we can mm -hmm. i don't know if you were christians there but i i guess even looking back now you would you would say um god was at will and at work with with both your lives mm -hmm. yes so how did you meet yeah we we met um we had a mutual friend we had a mutual friend and my mutual friend was um, a student, a student in the university, and she, on a Wednesday, you know, she called me up that she want to come over to eat an, an African food, you know. I mean, they, yeah. So she was going to for, going to church that Wednesday evening, you know, mm -hmm. midweek service in, in in her church. 
as at this time, I've, I've started the church, we've started, I've started the redeemed Christian church of God in my city. So I was a minister in my church. Um, that was around my second, third year in, in my program, PhD program. Mm -hmm. And then, so I said, okay, um, after your, after your uh, midweek service, you know, you come over, you know, on your way home, stop by to have your African meal. And stop by, yes, I was in the university all, my doorbell rang, I came down, and I saw my friend and our flatmates, you know, ah. at, around <laughs> that kind of 9 p.m., you know, after midweek service. And I was just, uh, what are you, <laughs> why, you know, you bring, you just, you called me and you said you needed African food. Now you're bringing somebody else. And I had just a little meal for her, you know, something like that. And yeah, that was the first time, you know, the stuff, you know, I met my wife, you know, you know, Andrea closely that day. Yeah. And, and he made, he made pepper soup. Now, if you're, African as well, if you're Nigerian, you know about pepper soup. And that's what he made for me. And I loved it. And yeah, the seed was sown. Mm. So, <laughs> so, so what happened was that I gave my African my Nigerian friend what she wanted, you know, then there was nothing left for her. So I quickly did the pepper soup, you know, for her, you know. Okay. And that was so the yes. friend that was coming over was Nigerian, but she brought Adrian, yeah. who was her flatmate. Right? Yes, she was. No, my wife's housemate. Aha, uh -huh. okay. And so, I think, you know, just as a, you know, as an addition to that, you know, you mentioned earlier about being led. And I think it's why it's so important to, to be led because, you know, when I finished my studies, I was actually going to leave Bradford. My intention was to go back home. Um, but God was speaking to me to stay in Bradford. And I didn't know why at the time. I've just graduated. There was no job. Uh, my tenancy was expiring. I was meant to go back. Well, God said stay. And um, I went to church that Sunday and I was looking for a reason. Uh, you know, God, speak to me. I was looking for like a flashing light of God, give me some sign. I don't know why you're telling me to stay. And um, this, um, I was praying all through the service and God, you know, I felt God wasn't saying anything to me. And I said, well, maybe I'm, I've heard wrong. And then this um, young lady came to me after the service and said, mm -hmm. um, God spoke to me during the service that, um, since you're looking for um, somewhere to stay, I'm mean, looking for a housemate. Should we share? And that's the friend that he's talking about. So, you know, everything works together. For good. So I'll ask Dr. Uh, Pastor Apple first. When you saw her, what, what did you think? I know you were saying, oh, my God, she's brought a friend around. I don't have enough food. Yeah, and it's 9 o'clock at night. So where, where did any of it take over you? As um, my person, as I then I was used to people, used to um, appreciating cultures, diverse cultures. You know, uh, my target was I mean, I was trained to be a diplomat, I was trained, trained to be a diplomat, you know, so my diplomatic life, you know, traveling around the world, then, you know, I've met different cultures. So I take people as people. You know, mm -hmm. so when my friend, when I saw my friend with my wife now, Andrea, that day, I saw at first there was a shock, but I'm used to entertaining friends with with um, a show of my culture. I had Japanese friends, I had Pakistanese friends, I had friends from you know from Germany. So when they come visiting me, I give them what is me, and mm -hmm. when I visit them. I enjoy their cultures. And then when I visit my Japanese friend, you, I mean, you, 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 you sit down, you, your, 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 your legs are inside a, a hole, you know, and you know, that kind of meal and all that. I enjoy, we exchange cultures. So I was, peace studies environment is a, is, a, is a melting point of cultures. And it was really an international faculty. So with, uh, I mean, having been part of that environment, I was able to relate with her. But the shock was that when she left that night, you know, when they both left, I went upstairs and I just, you know, said that this is the girl. This is the lady that I want, I want to marry. You know, I went and I knelt down and I prayed. Say, Lord, I don't know how it will be. You no, know, she came through a mutual friend, but this is the lady. I don't know so how you it will be. You sort of knew it, 
Almost I knew recently. that day. She went, she went that night. That night, she got home. She called her mother across nations. You know, and she called her mother on the phone that I went with my my housemate to her friend's um whatever uh house or for a meal, and the guy is good, but I don't know how it would be. That was a phone call to her mother that night while I was you were you were like Lord, I think. Oh, I know this is my wife. I'm not sure how it's going to be. For you, Adrian, what, what was... Yeah, I mean, it was, it, it was the same thing, really. It's quite amazing. You know, I used to hear people say that um, when you know, you will know. Um, and I used to think, is this a cliche? Is this a myth? Um, you know, and I'd been, I'd been praying and, you know... Um, all of that, but the way it happened was so unique because immediately I saw him, I just thought, wow, I mean, he's handsome for a start, but <laughs> but beyond that, I I literally just knew when I went home, I just knew that you know this is this is him, but I had no idea how to go about it, you know, what how it was all gonna unfold. Um, but yeah, I just knew somehow um this is it. Okay, um, I think that that's quite significant for people who are single. Yeah, uh, not not everybody gets it the way that you guys got it that first day where you were like, ah, this sort of fits because what you're saying is like, you know, there is something in my Noah that says this is the person, but the unknown, as as we talk about in counseling, is is there like, how is God going to connect? the dots and i guess adrian we we hear all the time that women the men do the finding and the seeking and the um announcement you know they're, they're the ones who say to us you know i think you're my wife or will you marry me or whichever way they, they want to phrase it so maybe i should ask this question so how just for a single lady out there, because sometimes we, we get these, com these conversations that are um, sometimes conflicting because if we re read something like in the book of Ruth, yeah, Ruth's mother-in-law was really engineered it and she presented herself. But a lot of times we also hear on the other side that no, the man does the finding and he does, you know, you just stay where you are. So it's always a conflict so how did you manage yours how did you manage that that you knowing because sometimes women know and the man may not know or he may know but not have uh, not feel he's ready or just not in the place to to articulate it so how how did you manage yours i mean that's very true and um you know i i i believe that as well and um, to an extent um but I believe you can make yourself findable. You know, um, I was, you know, just recently counseling a young lady, and this is what I was telling her because she was kind of um, bemoaning the, the absence of of a of a spouse, um, but she's just sitting in her house, um, you know, upset and complaining about it. And I said, you know, the more you serve others, you look for opportunities to to serve. You look for, um, you know, places that you can be. And, you know, because from, from that day that we, we saw each other, firstly, if you think about it, it, was we were coming from Bible study. So I had been to, to church. And then subsequent meetings that, that happened, you know, was again centered around um, church. I um, was volunteering in the hospitality department in my church. Um, and he, he came to, um, so I'm sure he could tell you better than me, but he came to... Um, one evening and um you know was out you can tell it better after that day you know after the first day yeah, then yeah. tell us how, how, yeah. how you, do you plotted your part <laughs> the, the, the the second time i you know we met again was my friend a housemate you know invited me over you know to the to a house for a meal mm -hmm. you know so i went over um I had a meal there, you know, just friends. And for most of the time, she was she while I was eating, she was she went upstairs to uh to answer a phone call to her, her fiance across the you know. So so while I was in the 
the, in the common living in two bedroom. Uh -huh. She, you know, she was now, you know, with me. You know, okay, while I was so having my. The flatmates went upstairs. Yes. yes. Or, okay, so, so you were left. Yeah. You were left. Yes. Alone. So, mm -hmm. so we, so we just, we just normal, just normal talking. Um, those days, you know, you bring in your photo album. Mm -hmm. You know, albums were not on Facebook, whatever you, you entertain visitors with your art photo album, soft talk, mm -hmm. you know, that can. So that was the second time. And there was no way I could ask for a number because I knew that it wouldn't be right. You know, I would put mm -hmm. myself in problem because we had a mutual friend. So mm -hmm. after that second meeting, the next time we met in church was on a Saturday. Then we're in diff two different churches. So mm -hmm. on a I normally meet my church then at a Saturday fellowship, you know? Okay, Saturday afternoon fellowship, like an ass fellowship. Then their church, our church was meeting a Saturday evening, evening fellowship. Mm -hmm. So on that Saturday, you I missed, had you missed it. I had went to Leeds for a friend's wedding. So I've gone for a wedding in the, in the next Leeds. On my way back, since I've missed fellowship, by in their church, which I had so many friends there. I had so many friends. And my friend was in that church too. So, and I just said, let me catch up with, with my friends in that church. Then I went fellowship there. After the evening, Saturday evening fellowship, we were on the foyer to yeah, have- like the, the queue for the tea we're, and coffee. We're in, yeah, in the mm -hmm. queue for, you know, for tea and coffee. So just in right queue, we had so many, so many international students from from you know, from South Africa, from from Botswana, Ghana, from Zimbabwe, so many. So, and most of them have not seen me for quite a while. Uh, a while. So, uh, we started exchanging numbers. You know. So, where are you, Hapo? You've not been around. You know. So, I think the when I took the last person's number, she was next to that person, you know, on the queue. And for me, it will be, it will be rude, not to ask her a number. If I stopped at the last African student mm -hmm. on the queue, so being my with my diplomatic life, I said it would be nice if I stop at the last African. It would be very considered rude. So, okay, mm -hmm. so why not just ask her? She was next person. So, okay, Andrea, what about your number? That was the first time. And, I, and, I, and you see, that's what I mean because you know some some ladies would say, "Oh, is it right that I give him my number? Maybe I shouldn't, you know, give him my number." But I just in the it, also seeing the, how how everything was, it was just friends together. And I we're said, all okay, students. We're yeah. mostly all students. Okay. So we so, you know exchange numbers, and then after some time, you know, there was exchange of messages of how are you? God bless you. Very you know, I'm blessed and highly favored. Very. Um, Christian text messages and <laughs> and from there you know talking and then we we agreed to meet for lunch and you know and then that was how um, courtship started so I, I I truly believe and I always tell people that it's about being prayerful um you know having your eyes open and then making sure that you're findable you know you're out there because I think one thing that that struck me in the story is that you were going with your friend to somebody's house that you didn't know and it was what we would consider late yeah mm -hmm. so some people may have said no i'm not going it's late i don't know him uh it would look odd he didn't prepare food for me but what you're saying is sometimes just just go it's, go it's with okay. the flow. <laughs> yes go with the flow exactly but before this uh, did any of you consider dating somebody who was, um, you know, we always say race, but I think there's only one race, the human race. You know, there isn't really black or white. Like, so did any of you think of dating somebody who wasn't your skin color? Let, let's, let's do that instead of white race or black race. Um, Before. Did, did, you ever, did you ever think about it? For me, I, I would say I had not thought about it because, um, it, as you said, I never really thought about, I don't know, I mean, it always comes across strange when I say I don't consider color because most, uh -huh. most people do. But, but genuinely, I've never really thought about it. I was, and as well as that, I hadn't dated. I was, you know, I always um, had the feeling that I was looking for a husband, not, not a boyfriend. So I had never 
dated. And so I was, you know, waiting for um, my husband. And so I, I can't say I sat down and thought about it. Um, you know, and obviously when I, I knew that he was the one, it, it was in my mind that, oh, you know, um, I hope it's going to be fine on his, um, on his side, you know. Well, what about you? You didn't think, you didn't about, think about your, your, your parents, your family? So well, my family, I mean, my, my parents, you know, thank God they're Christians and they'd always told me that um, as long as you marry a Christian, we don't, we don't mind as long as the person is born again. We're happy. Okay. And Pastor? Yeah. Um, okay. I'll, uh, Lydia, I, I want to rephrase the question, you know? Okay. Um, yeah. That, you know, did I ever consider marrying outside my race mm -hmm. instead of dating? So I want to change the word dating to marrying. Dating. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, because okay. they're, they're, they're two... They're big Different. things, you know. Yeah, that's really big things. Things. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. people may date, but they wouldn't they wouldn't marry that person because of yes. just because of skin color. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So did I ever consider marrying outside my race? Mm. Mm -hmm. I I would say that I had no issue with marrying outside my race as at then, as at that point of time, no point in time in my life. Because mm -hmm. as at this time, I had a goal. You know, to our my career was to be a diplomat. Mm -hmm. You know, so my career was to be an international diplomat. And by this time, I was doing a PhD. I've already had, you know, I've already had about three postgraduate degrees. That was my fourth postgraduate degree with the PhD. So, and I was just on top of my career, finishing my PhD. Then I start an international, you know, life. That was my goal. So. With that in mind, I mean, as long as the person is a child of God, you know, I had no fear. All I, all that, all the factor that I needed to affirm was the person should be a God fearing believer. Person, yes. Okay. So, what I'm hearing both of you say is, it didn't matter skin color, it didn't matter where they were from. The, the most important thing was that they were Christians and you you had the same the same faith because for you that was the most important. And Adrian's family had agreed or she felt agreed. What about yours? Did, did your family feel oh here comes a white lady in our in our midst? I try and warm my dad alive and uh and I put it before them, then my sisters through phone call and traveling down that it seems um, I will make a choice outside my ethnic group, outside my country of origin, outside the black race, you know. And at first is don't you see anyone from our ethnic group? in where you are you know that kind of you know at first that was a shock but uh by the time i made the presentation my family in london you no know, i mean that's the, as per culture they, they, they invite you come explain because when you marry you're not marrying just you yourself you're marrying someone to your family you know mm -hmm. and to your culture if need be you know and um, so i i went over to london answered all the questions for me, as long as the person was a child of God. And my pastor, I traveled to my pastor. My pastor asked me three things. I traveled down before making the final decision. My pastor asked me, is the person born again? Number one. Number two, does the person on, have an understanding of the Holy Spirit? And number three, does the person have faith? So once I was able to answer these three questions about who the person is, then it gave us blessings. Okay. You, you, you see, those three things that you said, they're, 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 one would imagine that every Christian has those things, but you can be a Christian and not be too big on faith. You might be a Christian and not be too big on the Holy Spirit. Um, but what your pastor was asking is, 
this might be a bit of a journey. Uh, you might need a lot of faith to work it out. Yes. You know, and this, the person you are going on this journey with, are they equally as equipped as you for, for whatever this, this journey holds? I think marriage in itself is it's a journey and it can be, it can have its challenges. Challenges, as well. yes. Yes, as well as its blessings. But um, I think when you're marrying outside your culture, your, your race, whatever, I think that adds a, a different element. And there was something key you said, which was that if you marry somebody who is Nigerian, um, you are marrying the family. It's not just me and my husband or me and my wife. So this person has to know that, you know what, the whole village is coming to your house and we, we you know, will our influence, will our presence, uh, will we matter? We will, will that person be respectful of this? Um, and sometimes in the Western culture, there is this nuclear family, I like to call it, which is just mom, dad, and the children. And the extended family are sort of sitting on the periphery. But in, in Africa, the extended family are in, they're in inside with you. But I, I, if I'm correct, I think Irish families are a bit like that. Uh, yes, yeah, they, yeah. they are. Family is, family is in the family. It's not mm. just um, the, the husband and the wife. So did that help? help you to understand where his family was coming from, where Pastor's family is coming from? I think so. I mean, we've, we've, we've been talking about that a lot, that, you know, the Northern Irish culture and the Nigerian culture in, in some ways, and even our Christian faith is, is similar, um, mm -hmm. you know, which has really, you know, helped us a lot. Um, yeah. I agree. Okay. What did, because from what you guys have, shared with us is that we met it clicked god worked it out family was on our side pastor was on our side what challenges did you guys experience because you've been married for about 16 years I, I i noticed the other day on social media you celebrated an, an, an anniversary what what challenges were along the way with all of this I think, you know, right at the beginning, you know, in courtship on the way to marriage, uh, you know, we, we've mentioned our families, we, we, they were on site, uh, but it's not everyone that, mm -hmm. that was on site. And, you know, surprisingly, um, opposition came from friends, actually, um, mm -hmm. you know, and on my side, a lot of my friends didn't really understand. Um, and it wasn't a color thing. Um, it was more of a cultural thing. You know, so they, they were feeling like this is someone that's from a different culture that doesn't relate with us the same. So, you know, when we, we when we introduced each other, it was quite humorous because we used to always wear suits all the time, you know, shirt and tie and full suit. And so I was going out for pizza uh, with my friends to like one of the pizza restaurants. It was a bad day. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, so we had, I had a big group of friends and, I said to him that, you know, I'm not sure about the suits. You know, is it possible that um, we could just dress down with maybe T-shirts and jeans? And so he did, you know. Uh, but even at that conversation at the table was a bit strained and people didn't really know how to relate and all that. So it, it was a bit of a challenge and strained um, friendships, um, you know. And then um, by this stage, I had, you know, I'm, we mentioned the housemate I stayed with that, that introduced us. And mm -hmm. by now I was living with another um, friend who was um, Nigerian. And um, when we started um, communicating together and texting, and I mentioned to her that, oh, you know, this was also a mutual friend. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned to her that, oh, you know, it's like um, uh, Apple's texting me and it's like maybe there's something going on. And she said, no, he's like that with everyone. But of course, you know, things developed. And when I told her um, that this is, you know, where we are together and we're heading towards marriage, she will, she got really upset and angry and said that um, it can't be, it's not possible. And I remember feeling so shocked that, you know, someone that I thought would be a cheerleader um, was really, really not happy and um, went into the room and called him and um, when we had gone to see my pastor, my pastor had said, celebrating every challenge. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and so he reminded me that this is what your pastor said and we prayed about it. And then she came knocking on my door sometime later and said she was sorry, she was just shocked. But that was that was still there. It was still how she reacted and I still felt it. Um, then you had some issues with, with church. Yeah, I mean, in, on my side, you know, my greatest shock was the opposition from the church, you know? I mean, I had, yeah, yeah, just a church where that I started in the city and uh, I was a minister or the, I was uh, maybe an elder with the colors then, you know? Um, so, but there was an opposition from the church. I mean, there were, very, very, um, what is the word there? Um, they were not understanding that kind of, or that, oh, that Apple, uh, we've lost brother Apple, you know, is now in the way of the world now, is 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 gone, is no, you you know, you, you you've gone out of the faith, and you know, and you no, know, if they see me with a flower, with flower, and uh, they'll just be laughing all about, you know, side side no, it's no side comments, uh, what is it with flower? You know, carrying flower for is this is new, uh, you know, you know new, new yes, kind of new lady, that mm -hmm. kind of you know. So that challenge was, I mean, from the podium, you see an attack for until you the message is about you and your, 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 your foreign wife that they will say that you're great. That kind of that was, and being, I, I, I will say as I then, I was not everyone learned, you know, I wasn't too much in handling it. Because it really touched me. I, I would cry on my own. I said, then why from the church? The church knows who I am, you know? And they gave you um, comments, all the kind of reasons that have made you to have made the choice, you know? And by this time, I've, I've, I've secured a scholarship to the U.S. for law, you know? I was married the next few months. I was living for the U.S. So there was no, whatever the comments that they were making were not who I was. You know, by this time I've traveled around most of the world. I've been to Geneva, I've been to Finland, I've been to Austria, I've been to I've, I've been to the US. You know, and that was my person. I, mean, I was going around the world speaking at the UN and all that. So by this time, they should, you know, I thought that they should know who I am as a person, as a global citizen. You know, that my church shouldn't be dictated by, you know, petty, petty human, what others they think, you know, what that's consider. You know, so that's really taught me as I then, and um, it took me time to develop uh, some stamina to be able to move. Uh, and, and it's just, you know, we, we've been talking about it recently, it's just um, lack of exposure, really, you know, of thinking that, um, you know, if I can use the term white people, or should I say non-Africans are, um, are not strong believers. And, you oh, know- okay. so it was it, coming from that-, that, that Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah, it was coming from the fact that, okay, you know, you're a minister in the church and you're going to marry someone, you know, who's, you know, how do we know whether she's a Christian, you know? Um, and then there's also, maybe it's an immigration thing. That's the other thing that, that happens. That, yeah, that, that the thing, yes. It's an immigration thing. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, in terms of marrying into different races, we've really got to think how we we react that not to make presumptions, you know? and. In fact, all of them now that when they've met me, I mean, there's there's no problem now. No, it no. was just a, a sense that of initial, not knowing. That, yeah, the level of mm. what, what you call emotional intelligence, you know? Yeah. The, no, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, but does, do you feel now, I guess, when you, you got married 16 years ago, it's, it's probably not as common. It, it wasn't as common then as it is now. Because yes. now mm. we have a lot of... Um, couples from i mean you see chinese with black indian with white it just doesn't um end but do you feel that society in general you know you're living in the uk living in bradford and even me living in london do you feel now when people see a, a, a couple like yourself an interracial couple do you feel uh, did you feel accepted then or do you feel more now or do you feel a little bit more integrated in society maybe that's a better word there's more acceptance yeah. around it uh, yeah i mean because what we were just talking about now is the church i don't know if it's entirely changed in the church but i would say in society um back then we'd get a lot of looks and a lot of stares but now you know no no one pays attention no one pays attention uh, so yeah it's, it's much more common now in society so, hmm. Society has changed, 
but the church yeah. is lacking time. That, that's yes. what you're saying. Yeah. But the so, church is yeah. gradually accepting it too now. Yeah. Gradually, yeah. gradually accepting it now. Gradually, but but I think it's important. I'm not. I'm. We're not slating. We're just saying that this is something we need to check, because if we are going to say everybody is God's child, everybody is the same, everybody is acceptable, then we need to look beyond these things that we're we're looking at. And uh, if a, a couple that is mixed comes into our midst. What Adrian was saying, do we now say, ping is immigration, ping, they're marrying somebody who doesn't believe, ping. <laughs> you know, all, all the norms, you know, all the things that, that, oh, how do they manage? Does she eat their food? Am I welcome in their home now? Um, you know, she's going to act differently or he's going to act differently. All those, those things that we, people normally, think about they might not say but they're, they're, yes. it's somewhere going, going along so what we're saying is society is changing is becoming more acceptable yes. and we in the church need to look about how we are we're doing how how we are doing in regards to this so i know you've got three beautiful children i, I see them on social media how how do you how do you blend how do you uh raise how do you instruct how how does culture influence you raising the children yeah um our first son we had him in the u.s so he's an american you know um yeah then and then we came back then we had the other two here in the uk um so the first the i think andrew has done very well because of our uh um uh accent has changed you know <laughs> yes uh, there's a story behind that <laughs> yes yes <laughs> I, 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 a lot you know so uh but that was an answer to my prayers yes. you know at the beginning i prayed very well and asked god that lord please i i really love that you know uh, we can communicate you know uh easily mm -hmm. you know and somehow god answered my prayers <laughs> you know so but the influence uh for our children i think we they've come to understand both cultures first the church and you know, we pastor is more you know we have more africans you know and so that is there they've seen how people um our life you know is there and then from the schools that they attend you know are predominantly more you know um white dominated schools you know so uh we think we married both cultures, no, mm -hmm. and at home they, they enjoy both kinds of food, mm -hmm. and we dance, we, we do, you know, and you know, they enjoy both cultures. I would say the music yeah. style yeah, and all yeah. that has influenced. I mean, what because what I would say, you know, if I had to say, what was the biggest challenge for us in 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 marrying from different cultures was communication. It was different styles of communication and different um, expectations about what was expected in in our marriage so um communication has been a big thing for us and right at the beginning we did um we were privileged to do like a six week um emotional literacy and communication course in the us mm. um so that that taught us a lot about communication which we've now been able to use for the children so you know we we are very um very um what's what's the word intentional yes. about um teaching them the history of both um, you know both cultures so you know you, um, my husband has taken you know we've gone as a family to some events in London that are about you know particularly his own tribe where he's from um, you know on, on my side you know in Northern Ireland we have um, cultural band parades which we've taken them to uh, we listen to you know music from both sides as you said food you know in, interestingly recently my daughter she's now um, 12 she created a menu in the house where she's she's kind of given us, um, she has two days, we do the rest and we share, and she's given us a menu. So this day we're eating fish and, mom's fish and chips. This day we're eating jollof rice and chicken, you know, so that there's balance in the house. She's very, you know, she's done that. So um, yeah, it's it, it, it's been intentional. I mean, that we were talking about that before, we yeah. today about being intentional. Yeah, there's one, there's one aspect of life, the law of intentionality. And we try the law of intentionality. You know, you must be intentional in doing what you know you 
you you desire you know so we try to put that in practice mm -hmm. yeah so so i guess what you're saying is that everybody is important yeah dad's culture is important mom's culture is important and we try to bring it together uh sometimes i've witnessed where one person is dominant you know the, the dominant there's a dominant culture and the, the children may be sort of pushed towards that way but i guess uh trying what you're saying is that we try to give them we we're, we're telling them who they are this is who dad is this is mom and like every children like you would give them 50 percent of your genes and dad will give them 50 percent. then we're blending and saying actually this is who you are but adrian has to tell us this accent why why her accent is the way you know is. i, I I, I believe God gave me an ability to pick up accents really quickly. Um, you know, that that's the biological, physical aspect of the answer to the question is I do just naturally pick up accents quickly. And so when I spend some time back in Northern Ireland, my accent will switch, will switch back if I'm there for a long time. And it, you know, but spiritually, definitely, I know it's it's not physically possible, really, you know, for me to just say I just pick up accent. And I do believe that God you know, um, made that to happen, not just for our marriage, but because of the ministry that we have. You know, as a, as a ministry, we do minister to many, uh, many of those from Nigeria and from many African countries. And it's just, uh, you know, that's why um, I believe that God has ordered our steps and everything that we will do. Even from a very young age, I always tell the story that I was just about seven, six, seven years old and um, in my in my church, I was part of Assemblies of God. And then um, on a Sunday evening, we used to have like special events every Sunday, even more of an evangelistic thing. And there was um, an, an, a group um, of African uh, missionaries, I would say, that came to the church. And they were singing and dancing and they had colorful tambourines and they were making a lot of noise compared to our usual quietness. And I remember saying, to, you know, to my mom that one day I'm going to be um, in a church filled with people like that. And it was so strange to her that she mentioned it years later that, you know, that's what she said. So I think, you know, um, even in terms of food and dress, and I've just been able to find it very easy and very enjoyable to be able to, to you know, to blend in and to merge cultures. And then I, I sometimes tease him that he's more English than than the English in some in some aspects. So you know, somehow we we kind of have merged in together very beautifully, and and it's God that can do that. So I think if we're if we're being intentional and saying I want to marry someone out of my race, it, it might be a challenge if God has not led you to that. I think the most important thing is to do what you've been you know you've been led into because God has put everything in us that has enabled us to be who we are going to be. Yeah, okay. And, and I think I, I liked what you said your pastor told you, which was to embrace every challenge, which I think can fit in all any scenario in life. You know, you, you have something in front of you and you think, well, you know what, I'm going to embrace it, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to celebrate it. Uh, this is a step. You know, it's it's just it's just taking me on my journey. So I I know you apart from the church that you pastor. I know you've got a ministry talking about building relationships. I know you've talked about communication. You've talked about being intentional, which I think uh, we can see from your marriage. You you intended that this is going to succeed. We need to communicate. This is the way we need. You know, there's like a, an agreement. I don't know if you sat down to to work it out, but when I hear you, I can I can see and feel that you are working in agreement. This is how we're going to do it. And everybody, it sounds like, has room has room to speak, and they are heard. And 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 whatever we decide, then gets done. Uh, so, do you want to talk a bit about your? Um, um, ministry or the building of relationships and and that part yeah but thank you so much i mean building building better relationships is what we've you know called the the ministry that is really about all relationships and then we also have a ministry on common marriage 
um, specifically for marriage. And then there's a, a ne nexus, nexus as well, which mm -hmm. is for those that are married 10 years and younger. So it's something that we are really, really passionate about because we can see um, so many pitfalls and we can see where we would have gone wrong. I mean, we wouldn't still be married today if we'd not been intentional, if we'd not, um, you know, like you said, come sit down and make agreements together. Because we could easily say, okay, we're going to follow, you know, we're going to follow his culture. We're going to follow my culture. And if you even take, um, you know, race out of it, you can have two Nigerians together. You can have two English people together, two Irish people together. They're going to come from different backgrounds. Um, and communication is just as key. Race is just another thing, um, you know. So we, we talk a lot about how to communicate how to um, resolve conflict, um, you know, how to, you know, different communication styles, different conflict resolution styles. And, um, you know, that, so building better relationships is even friendships um, in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You know, we work with different cultures in the workplace, um, how to do that. And, um, and then, like I said, uncommon marriage. And people often say, well, what is uncommon marriage? Why would you call it uncommon marriage and it's, it's because you know these days it's almost expected that marriages will fail you know when we hear another couple divorce we're almost not surprised anymore as society that oh well you know i'm surprised they lasted this long <laughs> you know so uh, uh you know and and if, if even if a couple are together it's almost like oh they're probably just together because of the kids or mm -hmm. you know they're just tolerating each other and we want to encourage couples to have marriages that they enjoy and that's why is it that's uncommon you know it, it, it's, it's actually more common to meet someone who's divorced or who's unhappy in their marriage than someone who's happy and you know in in in, in our early years it, it, we we've, we did face a lot of challenges and at times probably wondered did we make the right choice um but as as we sat down and we 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 decided how we are going to do things together it's made our lives better and really marriage is sweet. And that's what I tell everyone. Marriage is good. Marriage is sweet. <laughs> yes. Um I, I, I'll pick from this from the scriptures in Proverbs 18, 22 that says, He will find a wife, finds a good thing, and obtains favor from the Lord. Now the passion translation you know, says, When a man finds a wife, he has found a treasure he has found a treasure for she is the gift of god to bring in joy and pleasure so our life is i know i uh, i i we we laugh now and we you know we just look at ourselves and we just you know keep thanking god you know about our journey um first you know um what happened was that our moving to the us <laughs> helped, helped us a lot you know that helped us a lot because we were both out of our comfort zones in life. Mm -hmm. You know, I were both. You know, uh, I was international. Away from you know, she was a, away from my family. Mm -hmm. I'm away from my family, and we were in a neutral zone, neutral country. You know, and mm -hmm. that our time in the US first, just few months after our, our wedding in the UK, that helped us a lot. You know, we we try to understand how life is, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. then in the US we had a six weeks course on this on about relationships mm -hmm. and it was it, it was paid for by our boss in, 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 a, in a place of work and mm -hmm. and that really helped us and it was from that course that we did that we developed our marriage ministry mm -hmm. so and we are intentional in you know in trying to put that across you know pass it over to to others we have a post marital uh, program for couples those that were not opportuned to go through marriage counseling and we have pre-marital program for those that are going into marriage. And it's because, you know, this course that we did, we never experienced anything like it. Because, you know, when you go so for... You um, did you have counseling before you got married? No, we, 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 we did. But, you know, the counseling was very much where the pastor just talks at you about what marriage is and all the things that you should do and shouldn't do. And... What was so different about this other course was it was very, very interactive. There were exercises that you did together. You know, the you you um li, you know list all your all the things that you 
you know, like love languages. So you write down the things that you you love, you, you know. There was a course manual and yeah. booklets of all that. So it was so it was like going to school, and that's yes. always your yes. favorite phrase that yes. marriage is a school. Marriage is school. And mm. so it was like going to school. Doing so exercises, doing the exercises. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we felt, yeah, this is what is needed. It helped us tremendously. And, and, and that's what we mm. we 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 try to um you know teach or um counsel yeah. couples that come to us. Mm. Because it, it, I guess what you are saying is that if we are able to get together before starting the journey, and it, yes. it's, it's probably a school that you never graduate from until somebody goes home to be. No, no. So it, it is constant uh, learning, learning about the other person and how to communicate. And because life uh, is in stages, so. You were probably young and then you had a baby and then had two and then had three and then you moved and life life changes and i think we change you know in 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 different seasons in our life so what what you're saying is that we keep learning and relearning and coming back to the table and learning and listening to the other person and hearing what it is that they need in the foundation habit. is key the, the, the bible says if the foundation is faulty mm. what can the righteous do yeah. you know so the foundation, what you put in at the beginning, and, and I used to tell, tell, tell and what our younger ones, and one of those that we counsel is that, you know, in our marriage ministry, in our marriage uh, journey, I think we read, we, we read so much. You know, I, I, I normally say that I, I read, you know, about marriage more than uh, I studied for my PhD, mm. you know? So we must be open to studying, to reading, to yeah. attending conferences, seminars, workshops, you know that will build up that will prepare us before we start the and journey yeah and i think one thing uh, adrian mentioned was this uncommon marriage but i feel every marriage is uncommon because you know the, the way they communicate and agree and the people are different so each marriage actually is is uncommon because it's one that somebody else can't replicate yeah okay so we're, we're just coming to time so who wants to go first? Who wants to leave us with with something? Um, yeah, yeah, few things that w that we help couples, you know, is about is about you know the, the where you are, you know, one if for 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 those that are intending to get married, uh, the first is to be in a place of service. In a place of service is very key. Serving God, be accountable. Mm. Be accountable to someone else. You know, most times people want to just um want to feel that nobody has a say over them. You know, mm -hmm. he, I mean, when I met uh, Andra, I didn't go ahead. I I went to see a pastor. Mm. After I've seen that pastor, I uh. She came over to see my pastors. In short, that day that she came over to see my pastor, we had about a committee, a committee of <laughs> elders. I mean, they have, have, yeah, yeah, she came over. We were really you know, important to their heart, pastor. Yeah, no, she came over to join our church, you no, know, for that particular service. Mm -hmm. Then the senior pastor from, then, Manchester. from Manchester, then the elders in my church, about four, mm -hmm. one, two, three, another three elders joined. About then we went to a restaurant, and yeah. She was the person that that that, uh, that is to be interrogated, <laughs> you know. So so they have to interrogate yeah. her if I'm allowed yeah. to use that word, you know, before giving. Well, your that. point is about accountability. Accountability. I mean, you you must get to a point these days. Someone just no. comes and says, "Pastor, we're getting married we're getting, next week." That's it, <laughs> and you have nothing to say. You just come and yeah, we're getting married. The fixed date before him telling you. So you said accountability. Accountability yeah. is very key. And I, I, yeah, I think my 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 kind of kind of parting comments would be what we've been echoing all along is intentionality and communication is essential. Um, you know, for you to have a, a successful uh, married life, very very important. I mean, so if if you stop talking to each other, then, you know, marriage ends. It, it, it's, you know, the day that you stop talking is the day that the marriage ended. Be, 
the disintegration may come some years later, but it's 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 when you stop communicating, or if you've never started communicating, even you know. So communication and intentionality, sitting down together, and you know, deciding on certain things um, together, very important. And teamwork. Teamwork. Is <laughs> teamwork. Thank you. Thank you again for coming. Thank you for. Thank you so much for having Thank us. Thank you so much, Lydia, for having us and for giving us tools to journey this journey of marriage and i hear you say foundation is important agreement is important communication is important and intentionality this is going to work we are going to be challenged but this is going to and work. teamwork Thank teamwork means teamwork. 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 teamwork teamwork it means together we can achieve teamwork more and agreement yes yes thank you again thank you thank you so thank much, you so much lydia. lydia you're welcome um well we learned a lot um, regardless of who you choose to marry, your race, your culture, your <laughs> you're somebody from your same ethnic background, it doesn't matter. Foundation, intentionality, agreement, teamwork, communication is key. Thank you for watching and listening. My name is Lydia Khalil and I will see you next week. LCB and television broadcasts 24-7 on UK Freeview Channel 271, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, Google TV, C Love World, LCBNTV.com, LifeComTV.com.